Welcome to Mikon's hardware. Better late than never, right? Well, at least now I'm ready to make a video about this Machinist X99B9 motherboard that has been lying on my shelves for several months. First, let's start with the technical specification. So, technical specification of Machinist X99B9 is very similar to Machinist X99K9, but this one is black with some blue accent. And that means the chipset over here is the true X99 or C612 chipset. For memory, we have four DDR4 memory slots in quad channel memory configuration. For the CPU, of course, we have LJ2011 version 3 socket for support of Intel Xeon E5 V3 V4 and the i7 alternatives. Then we also have two M.2 slots, one over here before the GPU and one over here under the GPU. The one over here, the first one, it can be used for SATA SSD drives as well as NVMe SSD drives. And these jumpers are switching the functionality of this M.2 slot from NVMe to SATA and the other way. For extra storage, we also have six SATA 3 ports over here. And usually on the budget motherboards, we have only four SATA 3 ports. In this case, we have six because of the X99 chipset. It supports more SATA and USB 3 ports. The second M.2 slot supports only PCI Express NVMe SSD drives and just like the first one, they both are connected to the CPU and they work at PCI Express 3.0 x4. In addition to the M.2 slots, we also have the full-sized PCI Express X16 slot for the graphics card and we have additional PCI Express X4 slot. Both of these slots are connected to the CPU as well and both of them work at PCI Express 3.0 speed. This one, PCI Express X1, is connected to the chipset and thus the speed is limited to PCI Express 2.0. At the bottom side of the motherboard, you find all the standard I.O. The audio header, COM port header, 4-pin fan header, USB 3.0 header, USB 2 header, here we have a small speaker, then we have a 3-pin fan header, then we have clear CMOS jumper, and here we have auto power on uh, switch, which is supposed to force the motherboard to automatically start uh, in case of power loss and then restore. These are connections for the buttons and LEDs for the front panel. Additionally, we have a 4-pin fan header over here for the CPU fan, and the power connectors 24-pin over here and 8-pin CPU power over here. So pretty standard Chinese layout for an X99 motherboard. Sadly, at the bottom or anywhere else on the motherboard, you will not find a GLPC or another header to install TPM 2.0 modules. So you can say goodbye to Windows 11 on Machinist X99B9. The rear RU of the motherboard is also pretty standard for Chinese options. We have two PS2 ports, four USB 2 ports, four USB 3 ports, Ethernet port and the simple audio exits. Here I have to say that these four USB 3 ports are connected to the chipset and they are not utilizing any external USB 3 adapters. And that's only possible if you have a real C612 or X99 chipset. That's all you need to know in terms of technical specification. Now let's talk about test results of a Machinist X99B9. I have done all my tests and I have verified everything I could possibly verify on this motherboard, but I will only cover the problematic or non-working parts. So, first of all, the smart fan is very limited. It works only with the 4-pin fans and only for the CPU fan header. Additional, in the BIOS we do not have PWM settings, we only have temperature adjustments for several steps of the fan speed. This is very annoying if you have fan which comes with a high RPM by default, and on most of the other Chinese motherboards I have tested, it is possible to adjust the PWM value itself. Sleep mode doesn't work, run timings are not available in the default BIOS, and ECC mode of memory is also not supported by Machinist X99B9. Don't get me wrong, you can still use ECC registered DDR4 memory sticks, but they will work in a non-ECC mode. So if that's important for you, skip X99B9. CPU overclocking is also not possible. There are settings in the BIOS, but as soon as I enable overclocking with my i7-5820K, the motherboard simply does not boot up. Intel XTU doesn't work either. 
Resizable bar is available in the BIOS and it works, clear CMOS also works, but restore and power loss is unfortunately not available in the BIOS and the physical jumper which is supposed to take this functionality is not working either. I tested the jumper in both positions and the motherboard does not automatically start in case of power loss and then restore. It is also pretty disappointing that with i7-5820K that comes with only 28 PCI Express lanes, the second M.2 slot and the PCI Express X4 slot do not work, and that means that the PCI Express lanes are not routed correctly. 28 PCI Express lanes is enough to connect 16 lanes for the first slot, and then 4 lanes for the second slot, and then 4 lanes for each of the M.2 slots. This means Chinese have not yet fully figured out how the 28 PCI Express lane CPUs work. And finally, let's talk about VRM. Unfortunately, I bricked my motherboard before I executed stress test trying to perform Turbo Boost download procedure using Ultimate Patcher tool. Uh, Ultimate Patcher tool recognizes the BIOS, performs the modifications, but the produced BIOS is incompatible and the motherboard breaks. I have tried to flush the BIOS with my external flash programmer. Unfortunately, it was unsuccessful. So I suspect that the BIOS chip is physically damaged and I have to physically replace it. This is a project for the future time, and for now we have what we have. In terms of specification, X99B9 has a VRM slightly better than Machinist X99RS9. We still have the four-phase UP1649Q controller, but unlike X99RS9 that utilizes only three phases, this one has four phases. Each phase has a doubler, and on each double phase we have two MOSFETs. So in total we have kind of eight phases with two MOSFETs for each phase. Even though this is not the worst possible VRM, it is still kind of a low-grade option. And what's more annoying is that the VRM radiator does not cover the doublers, and it is not fully covering one of the MOSFETs in each pair. So I could suspect that the VRM cooling would be suboptimal, and if you try to install a V3 CPU with the Turbo Boost Unlock on Machinist X99B9, then I would strongly recommend to ensure good airflow over your VRM zone. For Turbo Boost Unlock on Machinist X99B9, I can say that it works for sure. There is a video from YouTuber called OPC Zhao, or whatever the name is. He has modified the BIOS, there are unlocked RAM timings, and Turbo Boost Unlock with minus 50 millivolts adjustments for the CPU. The Turbo Boost Unlock is performed using the old method, not the new one. That's why I wanted to produce my own BIOS modification, but unfortunately the motherboard bricked on me, so I can't complete that. Nevertheless, I have added support of Machinist X99B9 to Mi899 application, and there you will find the original BIOS and the modified BIOS from OPC Zhao. What can I say for the conclusion? Machinist X99B9 is some sort of a disappointment or a letdown. Machinists have been making these X99 motherboards for years, probably more than 5 years, and they still could not figure out simplest things. The smartphone does not work correctly, sleep mode doesn't work, no overclocking options, the PC Express routing is very suboptimal, so the 28 lane CPUs are handicapped, and even in 2025 the motherboard still does not have any TPM possibilities, while the machinist rivals such as Chihida X99H9S now have a native TPM 2.0 support. In addition to this, the default BIOS of Machinist X99B9 for some stupid reason has memory timings locked out, and we also do not have the ECC mode on the motherboard, which is also weird. Many of the Chinese motherboards already figure this out and come with a much better BIOS out of the box. Additionally, I could mention that BIOS from BIOS I engineer for Machinist X99K9 motherboard could work on this Machinist X99B9, but lately I engineer behaves totally ridiculous. He believes that I have to pay him to test his BIOS on X99B9 so he can get more sales because his BIOS is also compatible with another motherboard. In this case, of course, I declined such a generous offer and I did not test that bias.
With that I have to say, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I will try to revive this motherboard and maybe build uh, some sort of a budget gaming computer project with it, but until then I plan to do some AI testing with these three RTX 3060 and I might uh, explore the LJ3647 platform uh, somehow further. See you in the next videos and bye-bye!